Okay, this is the first of a couple programs on the muscles. We're going to kind of introduce the histology and physiology of muscles. So we're going to talk about muscle cells, kind of how they work, describe their function of the, the muscular system, um, and, and talk, or at least introduce contraction. So remember, we always start off with the functions. The muscular system, this is the system that produces voluntary movement. So walking, talking, breathing, these are voluntary movement, but it also includes movement in internal organs, like the cardiovascular system, the digestive system. Those are other types of muscles, which we won't say that much about, but uh, we'll say a little bit about them. Um, and then skeletal muscles also contract to hold you in position, posture. And so, so posture and then as a byproduct, these muscles produce heat and are important in temperature regulation, and they allow us to communicate. So this guy here, this is really, he's not, really looks like that, that's a suit. Um, and so it's, I have frightened rivals and impressed women, that's just kind of a joke. Okay, so when we talk about this system, skeletal muscles are organs, and the primary uh, tissue in these organs, the tissue that contracts is skeletal muscle tissue. And this tissue is made out of unique cell types. And we call them fibers because these are such elongate cells. They uh, are, are often much, much longer than they are wide. And they are so long that often they'll have several nuclei per cell. And they, they also have specialized organelles. They have a specialized membrane, which we refer to as the sarcolemma. Skeletal muscle cells all have um, a uh, specialized region where they contact uh, a neuron. That's the neuromuscular junction or the motor end plate. The sarcolemma also has specialized pits that go from the, sarcole or from the sarcolemma deep into the muscle cell. These are transverse or T-tubules. And those T-tubules are always associated with a specialized endoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum that's modified to store calcium and is always near the T-tubules. And then the most prominent features of these cells is that they have myofibrils, bundles of proteins, actin and myosin, that are really regular arrangements. These are thicker and thinner filaments that lead to the striated appearance of the cell. Okay, there's also lots of mitochondria there, especially for certain types of skeletal muscle cells, and these are very active cells. Let's look a little more uh, closely at the bundles of protein, the myofibrils. Okay, these myofibrils are arranged into sarcomeres. Okay, the sarcomeres are have a regular arrangement of thick filaments, myosin, and thin filaments, actin. And so you have this special arrangement that gives you the striated appearance. And the sarcomeres, um, the myofibril is made up of several or many myosarcomere units that are back to back to back. Um, and so they say myofibrils, the proteins themselves are referred to as myofilaments or just filaments. And these things are what are going to shorten when the muscle cell contracts. We have a pretty good understanding of how these things contract. Um, and we're going to talk about that later. But this begins with the nerve cell. And the nerve cell releases a message um, at the neuromuscular junction. This message is a chemical called a neurotransmitter. And for skeletal muscle cells, the neurotransmitter is always acetylcholine. Okay, and that acetylcholine will bind to a receptor on the muscle cell membrane or sarcolemma. Okay, this, uh, this causes the opening of uh, ion channels or pores on the sarcolemma that allow sodium ions to enter the cell. This causes a, a change in charge called a depolarization that spreads over the sarcolemma and into the T-tubules. This happening in the T-tubules will cause other pores to open in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and these pores will allow calcium to exit, uh, and calcium will bind to troponin, and, and that troponin will cause a shift in the position of another protein called tropomyosin. 
Okay, troponin and tropomyosin are, are proteins that are on the surface of actin, the thin filament. And when those bind calcium, they shift. And this allows the myosin filament to form a, a, a cross bridge or a linkage uh, so that actin and myosin are linked. After that linkage forms, the myosin molecule head will change shape that will cause the filaments to slide past one another. Okay. And if ATP is present, myosin will release actin, re return to its original shape, and rebind uh, the actin molecule as long as calcium is still present. Okay, and so this this is called the uh, this whole thing is called the sliding filament theory of contraction. Uh, and so you have events at the neuromuscular junction, what's called excitation coupling where you have the opening of ion channels on the sarcolemma and the sarcoplasma reticulum, and then the myofibril linkage that causes the, the actual contraction itself. Okay, so let's summarize. Muscles are organs. Okay, they are made up of multiple tissues. I didn't really say too much about it, but there's a picture below. Wherever there is uh, skeletal muscle cells, Okay, they will always be held together by connective tissue, and these connective tissues will surround the entire muscle. They'll divide the muscle into bundles called fascicles by uh, paramyceum, and then individual cells will be separated by uh, other connective tissues. These connective tissues join to form a tendon. There's always blood vessels and nerves in the muscle, and so this is made up of multiple tissues. It's an organ. The primary Material, though, for the contraction of the, of the skeletal muscle is skeletal muscle tissue. Okay, the skeletal muscle cells or fibers have unique structures like the sarcolemma, the T tubules, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the association with the T tubules forms triads. They have myofibrils with sarcomeres, striations, and things like that. We know the events that lead to contraction, the events at the motor end plate, the um, excitation coupling, and then the interaction between the actin and myosin. Okay, we'll talk more about uh, the events leading to contraction. We'll talk about energy, and we'll talk about responses of whole muscles. But this is our introduction.